Welcome to Crimson Guitars. We are part way through building a new custom uh, Robert Fripp signature guitar and uh, this instrument, as you hopefully already know, has got a Claro Walnut body, uh, one solid piece and a three piece rosewood neck uh, with wings, so five piece and veneers, so nine piece, it's a nine piece neck. <laughs> uh, ten piece, because I'm going to put a veneer on the top. Anyhow, I digress, I digress massively and I apologise for this. You will have just watched me rough carving this neck with my angle grinder and getting the, the required shape. Now, the next stage is to well, finalise that shape. And uh, while using the angle grinder, you can get very, very precise uh, to within half a millimetre of where you want. Um, with neck carving, it's, it's always better to leave yourself a little bit of room and to tease out the final piece by hand. Now, tool-wise, you have got very, you know, very many options from uh, well, standard rasps and files to surf form make those rather interesting tools and uh, I don't like them, they feel a little bit flimsy to me but uh, a lot of you will have them in your garage or your workshop and they do the job alright. Uh, I've got this handmade rat, tile, rat tail <laughs> rasp. Uh, I've had this for many many years and it's still very very sharp and uh, flat on one side curved on the other and this is most useful getting into places like like over there and you know helps another handmade um, rasp this is finer these uh, well I'll, I'll provide links in the descriptions to the videos uh, where you can find these the the reason I say handmade is because somebody has taken the steel blank and actually hammered in the teeth and that means that it's randomized and you will get less scratches and a finer finish whereas a machine made rasp do you know I don't even own a machine made rasp I've got hundreds of tools in here <laughs> and, uh, and I don't own a machine made rasp so a machine made rasp is very even and you will get a very rough finish and lots of scratches. My favourite, my favourite of favourite of favourite tools for this sort of work is the Shinto Japanese saw file. On one side fine, on one side rough and it's made effectively out of hacksaw blades and this tool I have had this one now for seven years and it's getting blunt uh, but it's still it's still my go-to tool and uh, I'll buy myself a new one at some point and be amazed at how much sharper it is but this thing is phenomenal because it has holes through it clears the dust and the shavings and uh, it it works much much faster than a traditional rasp or file and uh, with the two grades yeah you can do a lot and this is this is what I use so neck shape it's all about the feel and and the depth I've got the depth to where I want it to be and that's a fairly square uh, from there to there needs to be straight and that is it's roughly there, it's just got little dumps, uh, little dumps, little bumps and uh, these need to be sorted out by hand. Uh, I've left the shape somewhat D-shaped as well which I don't want, this is going to be one of our slim fast calves and uh, it's, I don't want to be feeling the neck there, I don't want that uh, to cause an issue. Now throughout the whole process you have your backlight or a window and you rotate your neck like so and I can see where I've been 
uh, where the bumps and, and uh, gaps are and I can then use that and it is entirely a case of measure measure cut uh, take it shape it check it shape it make some more dust and make sure you get it right uh, this is this is the user interface this is your ergonomic keyboard your uh, it's the most important part of the guitar you can have really nice woods and uh, super expensive handmade crimson guitar signature pickups and uh, did you notice I I managed to put our pickups in there and they are superb but that is all for naught if you've got a crappy feeling neck and fretboard spend 10 times as much time working on your neck and fretboard and frets than you do on anything else and you will not be sorry so now now I'm afraid you're going to be bored watching me shape a neck and it's, it's, it's not particularly interesting. Uh, I've got a clamping call here with, um, with cork and that as you saw when I was carving supports the neck when I want to clamp it down so I can clamp it to the bench and I can work away but so uh, quite frankly most of the time I hold the neck like so and uh, I shape away I can't and you can see how much material this beautiful tool takes now the traditional way and I'm going to do a video on this specifically uh, at some point the traditional tool is a spoke shave and and I don't know I have had I am much less narrow-minded than I was even two years ago it uh, you will always get a better finish with a bladed tool something that cuts rather than something that abrades will give you a better finish However, this is quick and uh, intuitive. Everybody knows how to use a file or, or a rasp. Um, at least I would hope that anybody <laughs> watching these videos would know how to use a file or a rasp. And you can get a really good finish. With one of these things, with practice, you can. And uh, it does the job. Uh, it's not my favorite tool for the job, but it might be yours. I would honestly say to everybody watching this, don't just do what I do. Don't just do what I find comfortable. Every person, every craftsman uh, will find little ways to do what they need to do and they will find the tools that they prefer. And that is how you should build. I'm giving you options. If you want to learn how to build a guitar, try the way I do it, try the way Joe Bloggs does it and have a look and figure it out. It's, it's all about feel, it's about experience. So a lot of this is about feel and uh, as you saw when I was carving it I started with a square blank and I carved the angle there down roughly to where the fretboard starts and then you slowly tease it away and uh, you do the same thing here you bring that down to the fretboard line and uh, move from there I'm alternating between the the rough and smooth sections of this file uh, depending on how much material I'm trying to take away and it's all about making an even feel Once the final shape of the neck is uh, is there, 
pretty much. Uh, it's on to the, the, the smaller details. And uh, this is more rasp work. Although I must say that you could also use a small drum sander to to get in here. It's, uh, again, all about personal preference and just do what works for you. Having just mentioned that uh, you could use a drum sander to uh, to f shape the corners, would you call those corners? I don't know. Those little fiddly bits. I thought, well, why not try it? I've got a little cam-operated drum sander here by. Carol Sanders. With the sandpaper on the drum, it's time. Let me put this there so you can see. Clamp the neck up. And this one just loads up in a drill. And this works rather well. This is much more rapid than uh, playing around with rasps, I must say. So I've roughed that in and uh, I will tidy it up with rasps in a bit. So our sandpaper has done rather a lot of work and it's down to files again. As always, you only push with the file, never pull back, that blunts, blunts it. And uh, I've got to be careful to uh, make the transition smooth. You'll see that I'm also holding the file in several places. I hold it there and here, and it just helps keep control. Carving a neck is somewhat of a uh, an interesting process. It's all subtlety and comfort and instinct, but it's done with angle grinders and rasps. The end result, though, is something you're going to be comfortable, and uh, we are now ready to do the final sanding. Almost. I have a headstock veneer to glue on. Thanks for watching.